Hi, everyone, and welcome to our first Lunch and Learn. Um, I'm joined by Lorna Eden, um, sorry, now Lorna Brown. She was married <laughs> earlier on this year. Lorna, that's a force of habit. Um, and uh, a new Tableau 2020 Zen Master. So we're really lucky to have uh, our Lorna here today, and I hope you guys, um, if you have joined us in the, in the Remo um, after We've uh, gone through Lorna's presentation, so she's going to be showing us how she solves one of um, her workout Wednesdays. In fact, this week's week 16 workout Wednesday. And how um, she'll tell us a little bit about how she approaches solving difficult Tableau challenges. So if you've joined us on Remo, after that, the live stream will stop and you'll have a chance to ask Lorna questions directly and also talk to any anyone else in our Remo space. If you're joining us on the live stream, um, you won't get to ask Lorna any questions, but I really hope you do learn something from watching her solve her Workout Wednesday challenge. And if you don't know who Lorna is, we're actually going to go through and ask her some questions. So I've got them, I'm going to cleverly balance my notebook right up underneath my camera. So hopefully it looks like I'm looking at the camera and you, Lorna. Well, actually, I'm focusing on my <laughs> semi-legible handwriting. Um, so Lorna, you are a new Tableau Zen Master this year, and although you've been very active in the Tableau community, some people mightn't know you as well as they know some of the more established Zen Masters like Andy Kreeble, um, or even Murray, who've, who've um, been uh, active for a little bit longer in a very prolific way in the, in the community. So I thought it'd be a great chance for everyone who joins to get to know you a little bit better. Um, so first, they may know you as Lorna Eden. So when did you? Uh, when have you become Lorna Brown? Um, I actually came Lorna Brown on the 29th of February this year, um, just before the lockdown happened. So it was just about enough time to get married and change my name. So. <laughs> Congratulations and Thank very, you. very uh, serendipitous timing as it turned out. It would have been quite, quite difficult to have a wedding during lockdown. Yep. Um, so everyone, uh, um, Lorna is now Lorna underscore Lorna underscore Brown on um, Twitter. Your Tableau public profile is updated to Lorna Brown. So although the photo is the same, the name may be a little bit different. So one of the things I mentioned, Lorna, you're involved in is Workout Wednesday. So, uh, can you tell me a little bit about what Workout Wednesday is and how did you get involved in it? Yeah, of course. So Workout Wednesday is a weekly challenge um, where um, myself and some other contributors, um, which are Zen Masters and community members, um, post a challenge with some requirements that people have to use to build a Tableau dashboard or a worksheet. Those challenges could involve things like um, certain calculations. So we may stipulate just using table calcs or level of detail calculations, depending on how mean or easy we're feeling. Um, but it's a great challenge. Um, it comes out um, on UK time Tuesday evening, um, just so that we can hit Wednesday at some point um, in the world. And um, so people can start early on that now. And we have the solutions out by the weekend so people can watch how we built it. Um, one of the things I love about Workout Wednesday is that there's more than one way to solve a puzzle, as I found what? out this week. Oh. Audio just cut out no. for a second there, but I can hear you again. It's okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so one of the things I love about Workout Wednesday is that um, the challenge is there's not one way to solve a puzzle, um, especially this week. There's been quite a few ways to solve it. So that leads me on to my second question, which is how can you give me sort of your top three tips around how you approach solving a difficult Tableau problem or in this case, a, a, a challenging Workout Wednesday challenge? Yeah, so I'm going to phase this in our Workout Wednesday situation. So um, the blog comes out. Um, I would read the requirements once or twice just to make sure that I'm getting enough information from those requirements. Um, then I take a look at the actual Tableau Public workbook. I hover over lots of different elements of the workbook to see if there's anything hidden but in plain sight. Um, so things like tooltips and um, chart types, just make sure that I'm clicking and hovering and just seeing um, how it's built but without actually digging into it. And then the final one is um, always make sure that you're looking at your data and understanding it 
what is a row level information on your data set. Most of the time we use Superstore sales, so people get used to using that, but occasionally we do use different data sources. Thank you. So if I summarize those, the first tip is, and this, um, although you've answered in, uh, specifically for Workout Wednesday, I will broaden these a little bit and tell me if it's still correct so you can apply them to any Tableau challenge. So your, your first tip is really understand and read the question, whatever challenge you're facing or problem you need to solve, it's worth the time spent understanding exactly what the, the problem yep. is. Uh, second, you said to sort of look at the solution. Um, and I'm guessing if you don't have a solution available, you probably do have extra information about whatever the problem is. So have a look at all the other bits of information um, or hi uh, hints, or maybe you've got an older version of a workbook that you need to update. So really understand, um, basically do your homework. It's, it's uh, number two to see if there are any hidden uh, things that will trip you yep. up. And then that third one is constantly go back and check the actual underlying data so you understand what each individual row of the data is showing. I guess that would save you from aggregating up data that's already pre-aggregated and so making no sense or at the same time missing some levels of detail in your underlying data and so your final result is not actually reflective of what's going exactly. on. Exactly. So that... <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, so there are three very good points, everyone. And they aren't very difficult. They might, approaching a challenge is difficult, but sort of following those three logical steps is, is quite an easy framework. Um, you mentioned uh, um, uh, in your first answer as well that some of the things in Workout Wednesdays you may see, for instance, you may re in the requirements specify that this has to be solved with a level of detail calculation and LOD that is, or maybe table calcs. Now, LODs and table calcs are something floating in the Tableau community. People prefer one or the other. Are you more of an LOD person or a table calc person? Um, I'm definitely more of an, a level of detail person because I can understand a level of detail calculation. So like the actually what it's doing and how it's doing it. Whereas table calcs, I still just click around and I know a lot of people still do that. I think I'm guilty <laughs> in that table calculation situation as well. Um, now, you're really involved in the Tableau community. So as you've been talking about, you are one of the Workout Wednesday co-contributors. That means you set um, some of the Workout Wednesday challenges. And in fact, I believe this current week, week 16 was one of yours. Yep. So if people have any problems, they can blame you. <laughs> um, you also uh, post Tableau Tip Tuesdays. Uh, so your, your people check out your blog. And of course, I'll link to Workout Wednesday, Lorna's Twitter profile and her blog um, in both Remo and, and on, um, on YouTube after, after the stream is finished. So you are heavily involved in Tableau Tip Tuesday, posting tips out um, pretty much every week, I think. You are a Tableau public ambassador. So if people visit your Tableau public profile, they'll see a plethora of visits that you have published. You're a Zen master and you are the user group leader of the Northwest user group here in the UK. How? And you've got a day job where you work full time and you have a life outside of work and you've just finished organizing a wedding, obviously. <laughs> um, now, people often want to further their Tableau skills um, or get more involved in the community, but it can be hard. And I'm just as I feel this just as much. It can be very hard to find the time to do anything else without dropping the ball on the rest of your life. Um, can you give uh, me and anybody watching um, any tips for how you can fit more Tableau into your week without having to sort of, you know, stop going for your morning run or, or other things that you may do that are very important to yourself as well? Yeah, I think um, the companies that you work for should definitely invest in you as an analyst or as a data person. Because the, if they spend time investing in you, you'll give more back eventually. So um, what I would probably suggest is try and get an hour or two hours a week. Like that's not a lot of time over a, a, over the grand scheme of a week. Um, just to have that um, uh, professional development time. So take the hour on a Wednesday, for example, to do Workout Wednesday or to do Makeover Monday or to do something that's a community initiative. Now, the good thing about that is when you're going back to your business and saying, look, this is what I've done, that 
solution or that workout could be implemented straight into your business so you might be able to use a chart type or you might be able to use a calculation that you've just learned straight into your work day and now that's helped that business along the way because you've learned it doing community initiatives that's sounds incredibly reasonable so instead of my wednesday lunch times getting lost in a you know following down twitter links or going through one of my favorite favorite subreddits which is accidental renaissance if anybody <laughs> wants to waste a lot of time in their life i highly recommend it so instead of doing that i should give up that 45 minutes or an hour and and do workout wednesday and i'm uh, guessing if i don't manage to finish it in within that hour um, or two hours sort of a week i give myself i shouldn't feel too bad about it because doing something is better than doing nothing um is that would that be a fair way to to, to think about yeah, it yeah definitely um we do try and make the challenges so that they can be done in an hour um but some of the times we add some extra little bits that end up taking you over that hour but um don't worry about those we we're trying to focus on getting the, the basics and making sure that you understand what you're doing as well as just doing it um so yeah um i think just taking that time and the solutions are out by the weekend so you could always take some time to watch the solution and and look at the bits that you didn't manage to do thank you okay well i will next week i will spend a little bit less time on frivolous things and a little bit more time uh, attempting attempting a workout wednesday or perhaps a makeover monday so just before we uh, go through and you show us your solution to this week's workout wednesday i see you're cunningly being able to help us by showing us the solution but also means <laughs> the solution we posted before the weekend i've got a, a few quick questions for you these are like quick mm -hmm. fire and a bit more fun um are you uh team tiled a team floating when it comes to building visualizations tiled all the way a team floating <laughs> gives me pure anxiety i can't i can't do it. i'm i'm a lover of containers so i understand and can control them so i think that's why i'm team tiled and so we shouldn't expect too many floating elements on any of your workout wednesday challenges no, definitely not <laughs> Perfect. And last one, what version of Tableau did you first learn on, if you can remember? I think it was version 8, so before level of detail calculations, um, back in 2015, I think. That sounds about right. Yeah, version 8 would have been, yeah, 2014 or 2015. I'm sure if somebody who knows on a, on either in the room in Remo or on um, or a night, watching on youtube if you can drop into the comments uh and let us know when 20 version 8 came out then um but yeah that sounds about right so that's a uh, a long time ago but also not that long ago lorna so um it means we can all start learning now and in a, a not that long a time become an absolute tableau whiz although you did go through the data school as well so i guess you had a uh, real push on getting to learn tableau so um I think it's probably about time you showed us your workout Wednesday challenge solution. So if you're able to try sharing your screen of course. and I'll see if we can turn our cameras off so we can focus on your screen and, and not on us. Okay, cool. Okay. So can you see the workout Wednesday web the website? I can, Perfect. I can, and I will turn my camera off so we can see that screen larger. Perfect. Okay. So the first um, section that we would want to look at is actually just have a look at the challenge itself. So if we go to the Workout Wednesday latest challenges, you can see week 16 by myself. So I give a bit of an introduction on here, um, put the link of the uh, viz in there, and then here are your requirements. Now, um, I've bolded some things so that you can try and get some hints along the way. So we're looking at blending, three sheets or less, and then there's some other requirements down there. So if I open up Tableau Public, you'll be able to have a look at my workout. Now, um, as you can see, I'll hover over things. So I've got a tooltip on my Gantt, but have I got one on this dashed line? No, um, if I can actually hover over it, um, try using my mouse instead um 
but I don't have a tooltip on my reference, my dashed line. And I know that Tableau can't do dashed lines naturally without hacking it a little bit. Um, so I know that's a reference line and we have something up here, but there's no hover option. And down here we have a plus minus, which means I could drill down and we have another one. So that to me says that there's two sheets in here. Now, some of the solutions um, this week have provided this in one sheet. Now that's using table calculations. And as I said before, I'm not the best fan of table calculations. So I did it the cheat way. Now we're just gonna go into Tableau. I'm just making sure, can you see Tableau, Sophie? I can see. Um, yes, I can see your Tableau public page. Oh, can you see Tableau desktop? I okay. can now. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So um, we're going to go through and see what's going on in our data set. I'm going to try and build it from scratch um, and hopefully um, build the calculations out correctly. So the first part of this dashboard is this first sheet here, which is looking at closed one and the target. So we're going to create a calculation which is just, oh, it's gone onto my other page, sorry, um, which is gonna be closed one um, values. So this is gonna purely say if the stage equals closed one, then bring me back the sales, else zero, and then end. So that's just the first calculation. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm going to drag that in to my rows. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new calculation, which is just looking at the month of the close date. Because if I take a look into my data set, you'll see that the close date is actually at a daily level and we want to aggregate it up to a monthly level. So I'm just going to create a new calculation just called date and then we're going to do the calculation called date trunk so this is going to aggregate the dates up to the month um of the close date um so yep yeah, so we've got date trunk month close date now i'm just going to make sure that that's a date not a date time and then we're going to add um that date onto our column so if i hit option drag on a Mac or right click and drag, we get this date field. And I'm just going to put it as the um, month of date. Now, as you can see, we've got some closed dates and we've got April and then it goes down because we have no closed one dates in the future. So the first thing you've probably noticed is that it's, um, I have a data source filter on here from my workout that basically just filters it to the latest year. So that's why we're only looking at 2020. So the first thing, I'm going to change this to a bar. And I'm going to actually make this um, make this this top, a discrete month instead. So it looks a little bit cleaner. Now, what we've got here is we've got um, our dates, but we only want to see January, February, March, and April and above is on the next sheet. So I'm going to create a calculation called month. Um, is greater than today, number two, because I already have one. And then we're going to create this calculation. So I'm going to say if the date is less than, we're going to use that date trunk field again. So date trunk month of the native field called today. Now, today is calculation from Tableau, which just returns the current date. So again, we're aggregating up to the month of today. Hit OK. Now, if I put this onto my uh, columns, you'll be able to see what's happening. Um, you'll see that we've got true, 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 and false onwards from April, which is what we want. Now we can add this to filters, hit true, hit OK. Great, we have our um, closed one dates for January, February, March. We just need our target now. So we're going to edit the blend relationship, uh, go to data, edit blend relationships. And we're also going to add in here date. So we're going to have month of date equals month of date. And it's going to replace some references. Um, and then we're also going to have 
the year of date equals year of date. Again, it's going to replace the other mapping, so it'll break my original workout, but we'll go from there. So hit OK, and now I'm going to go into my monthly pack pipeline and you can see that my date field is um, highlighted with the chain with the orange to say that it's linked. I'm going to pick up my target and drop it next to um, next to my um, end of the month and you can see there's a dashed line there. So I'm just going to drop it there and this is going to give us a dual axis. Right click always synchronize your axes and then I'm going to change this to a Gantt and um, I'm going to add in the Tableau Tip Tuesday from this week, which is using the average of a thousand to make your Gantt bar a little bit thicker. So as you can see, we've got different um, targets based on the closed one figures down here. Now, this is um, our green value, so we can keep that going forward. Now, this is our sheet one. And if I duplicate this and change this filter to be false, this is what's going to happen going forward. So we already have our targets and we have our closed one. Now we just need our pipeline uh, calculation. So I'm just going to have a new calculation called pipeline two. And we're going to say if um, contains the stage value, and we want to say if it contains closed, then um, zero else sales. So anything that's closed is now going to be a zero and everything that is um, open is going to return the sales. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to pick that up and drag it and drop it on top of my closed one values. So you can now see the two green rulers, which means that you're going to get a shared axis. So if I drop that on there, measure names goes to columns uh, but what we want to do is we want to pick measure names up and drop it onto our color here and that is it so I'm just going to change this color to a slightly lighter purple yeah okay so now we have our closed one and our pipeline figures so I'm just going to move pipeline to the top so that we have closed one pipeline now if I go back um, you can see we've got this gray bar, which is looking at the missing pipeline from the adjusted target. So we need to create that adjusted target field. The first section is we need to have the sum of the total closed one. So whatever this value is, so it's down here, 87,000. And then we need the sum of the targets. So we use uh, my favorite level of detail calculations here. So I'm going to show you um, the level of detail calculation. I'm going to cheat on this one um, and show you the calculation itself. So ignore the, so the curlies mean fixed. And if you've noticed, my year is in context, which means that that comes first before any calculation. Now, what this is saying is if the year of today equals the year of close date, so 2020, and the month of today equal it is less is greater less than no sorry greater than the um, month of the close date, and stage equals closed one, then give me back the sales. So this is going to return the January, February, March sales as the sum. So it's going to remove the fact of the months and give me back the sum of sales for the first three months of the year. And we're going to do the same again with our targets. So again, if I edit this one, so it's the same calculation just with using the secondary data source, which is the monthly targets. Now, what we want to do is we want to create our adjusted target overall. So we're going to create a new calculation. I'm just going to call it just to target overall. So what this is going to do, in fact, before we do that, we need a final one, which is called remaining months. Now, the remaining months is just 12, which is how many months are in the year, minus the month of today, 
number, which is four minus one, to get just last month's, um, the last three months. Now, the adjusted target um, overall, which is the value that we're going to be adding onto the rest of the month's target. So what we need here is we need to um, add in the year-to-date uh, planned. So we're going to drag and drop that in. We're going to minus that from the year-to-date actual. We're going to make sure that that's a sum, though, because Tableau won't like it otherwise. And we're going to wrap that all in brackets. And then we're going to divide by the minimum of the remaining months. Um, if we use the sum, it's going to sum up for every row of our data set. And we don't want that. We just want the minimum. So now this is going to give us our um, overall um, figure for our data set. So if I um, just duplicate this one again, just so I can show you what, it, in fact, I'll duplicate it as a cross tab. So I can show you what it's doing. So if I add this in, you can see that there is, um, you need 1,898 to your target. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our target field now. So this one is just going to be called target. And now what we need to do is we need to um, add in our overall plus the secondary data source of the sum of target. Now notice this one didn't have that squiggly line to say aggregate and non-aggregate. That's because our um, adjusted target overall is already aggregated. Now if I hit OK and if I drag that in, you'll be able to see that the new target is updated based on the um, adjusted target overall. So now how do we implement that into our, into our sheet? So if I drag in my target um, calculation, add it onto detail, doesn't do much. But if I add a reference line in here, change this to um, target and make sure that this is the maximum, it's going to go up to, um, sorry, it's not what I'm doing, um, I, per cell, sorry, change it to per cell. Change the computation, we don't need a label on it. Uh, we can add a custom tooltip if we wanted or just leave it as automatic. And here we can change it to a dashed thick line or thin line and change the color so it's the same as the other one. And just untick show recalculated. So this is how we've managed to get our adjusted target and our um, actual pipeline and our normal target. But we're just missing the gray bar between the adjusted target and the pipeline. So now we just need to create a calculation called missing pipe, which is the um, target minus the um, sum of the pipeline. So this needs to be a sum and plus the sum of closed one, just in case there's any in that specific um, month and we're just going to wrap them in a like this in brackets and if I hit OK now if I add MP in there uh, we actually have the minus figures so that is oh no we don't um, I just had them at the bottom so if I add them to the top and change the color so that it's just um, a light gray hit OK and now you can see we've got our missing pipeline in here. Um, one of the tricks here, we've got obviously a negative number, which we need to adjust. And if I just show my old calculation, and I'm just accounting for that. So if the sum of closed one and the pipeline is greater than or equal to the target, then zero, else adjusted target, else the calculation we've just built. So I'm going to use that one instead. I'm just going to add that one in. So now you can see we don't have those minus figures and we've got them all together. So I'm just going to unshow that header. The last thing we want to do is now create a dashboard. So the 
uh, size was laptop browser. And we're going to add in sheet one and sheet two. Um, but this doesn't allow us to adjust automatically. So I'm just going to undo that. Add in our horizontal container. I'm going to add in sheet one and sheet two. I'm going to hide this header. Hide. Um, I'm going to hide that header in a moment and close this. But if you've noticed, we have different scales on our different sheets. So we need to create a calculation which allows us to do this. So if I go back into here, I'm going to open up my max reference line calculation. Again, using a level of detail, this is fixing it at each month, bringing back the sum of closed one and the sum of pipeline and giving me back the max. So this will give me this max value here. OK, so now if I right click on here, uh, add, fact, add that onto detail first, right click, add reference line, change this to my max. And we want this to also say maximum. Um, and then hit, we want to remove all of these. So none, none, none. So it's an invisible line. And then also we want to do the same on this sheet. So if we add in our max reference line, add in a reference line of our max and max again and now we just want to change those so that we get rid of them and then hit ok now if i go back to my dashboard you'll see that these are starting to add up now so if i just rotate these and rotate these and remove this header you'll see that we've got a little bit more of a chance of lining these up uh, the calculation isn't quite right so if i go back into my originals um you can see that i actually use um a different reference line let me just check this again where has that box gone um edit reference line oh so i actually use the um distribution which is 115 percent of the maximum max reference line to give us that top level here. And then the final thing is just clean up all the tooltips. I'm not going to go through that because that's fairly easy. And then this legend. So what we do with a legend is I drag stage on, uh, uh, not stage, sorry. We want to have the measure names onto detail and then measure values also on there. And we're just going to edit the um, we're going to filter this so that we just have our adjusted target. We want the uh, missing pipeline, closed one, and the pipeline. But then we also want in here the target. So what this then on the columns, if you do the average of zero and put measure names on columns as well. In fact, we want the average of one, sorry, not the average of zero. This is going to give us a breakdown. If we edit the axis, make sure that this is fixed to zero and one. And add measure names onto color. Uh, don't show this again. And then um, also add measure names onto the label. And uh, just align them so that you can see show header show header and then just fit entire view and then just format that up a little bit better so that is basically the whole of the workout from this week um i hope that's helped you along the way um and it's cleared up some nuances within the data that i have done so yeah thanks Thank you so much for that, Lorna. And I have to say that's a very attractive uh, color palette, um, teal and what would we say, fuchsia. Lilac. Turn my camera on. <laughs> Lilac. Um, thank you so much for taking us through uh, your solution and in quick time as well. I think that was probably 20 minutes or less. So nice. Shows, I guess, 
what what you can do if you uh if you've done your preparation and well I guess in this case it's kind of cheating because you're the one who set the problem but um I yeah we'll have to try your your advice for next week and spend two lunch times um working on some tableau visas so thank you so much for joining us for everyone who's on the live stream um thank you so much for tuning in to us today um and for this our first um data lunch and learn uh with Tableau Zen master Lorna Brown. We have a, another Lunch and Learn coming up next Friday, again at 12.30 um, British Summer Time. And next Friday, we're going to be with Chris Love, another Tableau Zen master. And Chris is going to be taking us through um, a presentation he gave a few days ago, actually, about next level Tableau. So taking your Tableau from good to great. And now I would attempt to share my screen to, to do a slide for this for you. Um, let's see if this works okay. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so yeah, next uh, next Friday, the 24th of April at 12.30, we're going to have Chris Love um, taking us from Tableau good to great. If you'd like to RSVP on our meetup group, which is Let's Talk Data, we will put the links up to where you can tune in for that um, later on, on this week or early next week. We'd also love to hear from you and about what you think about these Lunch and Learns. Um, will you find them helpful? And does the format work for you? At the moment, we're trialing two different ways, a live stream and also uh, Remo, which is a platform where if you've signed up, you can come in and as soon as this live stream finishes in a moment, Lorna, everyone in Remo, if you'd like to put in questions into the Q&A or chat box, we'll be able to ask them for um, to Lorna for you. And then Lorna, you'll be able to wander around the tables in our, in our virtual Remo space and talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. So if you have signed up and you are in our virtual Remo space, you'll get the chance to talk to Lorna um, personally and ask her any tricky Tableau questions you may have. So from me, thank you so much, Lorna, for taking us through your Workout Wednesday solution and letting us all learn a little bit more about you. You're welcome. <laughs> For everyone on the live stream, I hope you found this a, a helpful lunch and learn and you've got a little bit of extra data along with your sandwich and cup of tea over this lunchtime. So thank you so much. I'm going to end the live stream now. Well, Sophie, My name is Sophie. Yep. So there's some questions in the Q&A on Remo. Um, do we want to go through them? Or? We will in a second. I'm okay. just going to end the live stream um, because the people who've uh, signed up and joined in on Remo, this is the extra bonus they get. So for everyone on the live stream, thank you so much for dialing in. My name's Sophie Sparks and I'm the community manager here at Tableau. And please do join us next Friday for our Lunch and Learn with Chris Love. You can RSVP on Meetup and you'll be able to get all the details. So for everybody on the live stream, goodbye from me and goodbye from Lorna. Okay. And everybody in our Remo space, please stay on and we'll answer some of those questions. <laughs>